Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over setup and the basics of round structure in the Dune Empyrean game published by Direwolf Games. So the rulebook does a great job of showing us how to set up, but I'll go ahead and go through that process and the extra steps for a solo playthrough. First, of course, we're going to put out the game board and take the Mintat token and put it up on its space. Then we'll take the four Alliance tokens and place them in their location on the board. Then we need to take our conflict cards, separate those by the tier one, twos, and then the threes to create the conflict deck. So we're gonna take all the con or level threes, give them a shuffle. Then we'll shuffle the level twos. We're gonna take five out of this stack and place them on top of the other. These go back in the box. And then with the level ones, give them a shuffle and we're just gonna take one of those and put on top. So that's created our conflict deck. Then we're gonna make the intrigue deck, taking all the cards with this back and on front, just gonna have a black border without that symbol. Those are the starter cards, so make sure those are not shuffled in with here. Give those a shuffle, and since I have these sleeved, they're not gonna stand alone. So I'm bringing in an E-Raptor deck holder to put those in. And we're gonna take the top five cards. And that's gonna create our initial lineup. We'll go ahead and just place those out here. Then we're gonna take the smaller stack of Intrigue cards and give them a shuffle. I don't have the E-Raptor counterpart for Holder, but I do have the Broken Token version to hold this size of card. Next, we're gonna create our reserve. So these look like the Imperiums, except they have white text at the top or a background. We're gonna create a stack of the liaisons. The spice must flow. And the fold space. And even though we're playing solo, there are gonna be three leaders in this. So the game does suggest our opponents to be these two. So we'll have those in play. So we've got Earl and the Beast. And we're gonna go ahead and play as Paul. So it's showing where our deck and discard piles go. We have a persistent effect. You may look the top card of your deck at any time and a discipline attack or ability that's gonna let us draw a card. Then we're gonna take our stack of starting cards just for ourselves. Like I say with that symbol, give it a shuffle. Oops. Without throwing our cards around. Then I have three resource types that I'm just gonna have off to the side of the camera. And each player is gonna start with one water. And the remaining water, Solari and Spice, is off to the side. Then in the same containers, I have the tokens for each of our colors. So we're gonna take one of these round ones, put on the score track at zero, and we'll just place the other one on their spot in case I forget what color everyone is. And actually I think I wanna be green. Then we're gonna take two of our agents, put on our player board, and our third one is gonna go up here for us to get later. We'll get two for him, and two there. Then our combat markers. We'll place down at that location. Then we just have some other components. We are gonna take four of these tokens to place on these tracks. For each of our players. And 
Oops. First player will be the one to our left, so that'll be the beast. And typically the other agents for these guys will go off to the side, but they'll be going play somewhere else for a little bit, or in a little bit. And the last thing is putting some of our warriors and the garrison. And typically each of these would get three also. And that will finish up the basics from the main game. So for the changes for solo play, we get to choose our difficulty. If we want to go novice, veteran, or expert, I'm definitely a novice at this game. Kind of went through the basics just to figure out how to play. So this will be my first time going through it. So we're going to go on this level. So we are going to get some extra resources, a Solari and a Spice. Put those on our board. For the Solari token, it says no. Basically, instead of paying two for the Mintat, we put a five calls token up there to change the price for that. Rivals starting garrison troops. We're going to have zero in their spaces. Then extra starting resources, they will also get zero. Then we have the AI deck for our rivals. So we want all the ones with the one P for one player and blank. We'll get those shuffled up. Place that to the side. Like I said, we will not be using the two player versions. And of the leaders not used, we'll take one of those for the backside for the round order. So the basics of the game, we want to be the one with the most victory points tracked on this side. The game will end at the end of the round if someone has either 10 victory points or we've gone through all the conflict cards. And speaking of the conflict cards, uh, the our rivals are going to get their third person after the fifth conflict card comes out. So what they recommend doing is one, two, three, four, five. Placing these there. So we know once we go through that stack, they're getting some extra people. So with those basics, we're going to reveal a new conflict card, start a round. So that's going to tell us during our combat phase, first place, second place, and potentially a third place might get in a fight. Place that next to the board. We'll draw a hand of five cards. Two, three, four, five. So this is what we've got to work with on our turn. Then we have the player turns, take an agent turn. So our rivals will just take agent turns. They will not do a reveal turn. So basically for the AI in this, for his turn, take an agent, we're gonna draw a card. Get a harvest spice, send an agent to the space with the most bonus spice or total spice of tide. If no spaces have bonus spice, reveal another card. So those three areas are empty. So we're drawing another card. Same thing again. So that's telling us the location where he's going to go. So the worker placement. So he goes there. So we ignore the rewards on that side. He's going to get the tokens here. So he's going to get one army token, and since that's a combat space, he immediately goes into conflict. And when they go into conflict, they will take up to two if they have any others in their garrisons to come in with them. So Earl wants to go to Carthag, that space is taken. So draw another card, he's going over to fold space. And he's gonna go up on that track. Then off to our turn. And the basics of this, we can play a card from our hand, choose a board space with a matching agent, matching agent icon and send an agent there, pay any cost for the space, earn rewards and use effects on the space and the card's agent box in the order you choose, including if it's a faction space, move your cube one space up. It's faction track, kind of like what we just did there for him. If it's a combat space, you may deploy troops recruited this turn to the conflict, plus up to two troops from your garrison or take a reveal turn. We reveal the cards from our hand, earn rewards, use effects in their reveal boxes and acquire cards, set combat strength and clean up. So basically what all that stuff means is each of these cards either has one, a few, or no symbols on the left side. That determines the locations they can go. So for this card here, it's not gonna allow us to put an agent anywhere. These two allow us to go to a green space, which are those 
the areas up there. Got some blue circles along the edge, some triangles down here, three on this side, two up top, and then each of the factions. So this allows us to go to the green spaces, the signet ring, green space, the blue circle, or the triangle. And this one allows us to go in any of those faction areas. And we can do the ability in that area there. So here we'd get to use our signet ring ability, which is draw a card. Whereas if we use this one, there is no ability. So let's say we wanted to go to Abikeen. This allows us to go there, take one of our members. That allows us to get one cube. Since it's in a combat space, we can go ahead and put it in here. Plus we can take two, up to two from our garrison and bring on over, which we will, so we can explain combat a little better. Plus we get to draw another card. So drawing into that. Then our signet ability, we get to use that, which allows us to draw a card into that one. So we'll just go ahead and finish this whole turn up. So once again here, drawing a card, want to go to the Highliner area. It's gonna go up one on the track and gain three cubes and go into the combat zone with them. So he wants to fight with us. And the symbols on the bottom get ignored for now. Those will be a bonus coming up in the fight or combat phase. Over here, it's gonna to go to the hall. And he gets a cube, but it is not not a combat space, so it just goes over in a garrison. And it's back to us, and we know we've got someone here that wants to fight. So we're gonna play Diplomacy, which is gonna allow us to go to any of these faction symbols. We'll place over here in the Hardy Warriors. It's a cost, we need to pay a water. And a reward is, we're gonna get two cubes, which we're gonna to choose to go ahead and put in the combat area. And if we want, we can move others over. We'll just pretend we want to hold on to this. And we also go up one on the track here. So they do not participate in the reveal turns. So back to us, we get to reveal. So then we're going to take the rest of the cards in our hand, revealing. So what that means is we're going to pay attention to the bottom area. So that's going to give us two more fight. So we're going to go up the track by two. And each of the cubes we out here, have out here counts as two combat. So that's going to give us another 10, so we're up to 12 combat. And we also have four money or persuasion, which we can use to purchase cards. And we can buy multiple cards, and cards do replace immediately. So we could buy this for one cost. We've got three money left over. These immediately go to our discard pile. See what pops up. We've got a three cost card, so we'll go ahead and take that one too. That ends the reveal. So Earl is not in combat, so he won't be doing anything. The beast is, he's got four cubes, so that takes him up to eight combat. And since he's in combat, he's gonna get a boost. So this is when we look at this. He gets a bonus seeing what down what is down there. So he's getting another four. So he's going from eight to 12. So now we're tied. So if we had some intrigue cards, we could play them. So taking a quick look at those, we've got some that are plot cards that can be played pretty much any time on our turn. Some that can be played at end game and some combat cards. So right now, if we had this, we could play that down to get another two fights. So we could be in first place, but we don't. So this kind of makes sense if it was obvious, if we did have something like that, we'd get to go up in one of these areas here with influence and get two of those tokens. Second place would get three. But since we both tied, means neither one of us gets the first place. We both get the second place reward. So three Solari for each of us. And in a three player game, Let's say this person was in that combat. Uh, third place does not get anything. The only way that comes in place 
is say if we had a first place definite winner and there was a tie for second, then first place would get the top reward, skip second place, and then the other two would both get the third place reward. So after combat is done, all these people that were in the combat get returned to each player's pool. So when you do go in a fight, you want to make sure you're going to win at least first or second. Then the next phase is the maker's phase. Place one spice on maker spaces that do not have an agent. So since no agents were in these three spaces, each of those will get one spice. So next time someone goes there, they get some extra spice in their life. Then we recall, check for in-game, which obviously hasn't happened yet. Return the Mintad if someone used it. Recall all our agents back to our leaders. So everyone goes back home. And pass first player marker. So that's set up and the basics of how the game is played. Like I said, we'll keep on doing this till we get to the recall phase. Someone's got 10 victory. At the end of the round, you'll declare your winner. And in case of ties, there are several ways to break the ties, starting with the amount of spice, salari, water, and then garrison troops. And of course, further you go down into conflict, top prize is gonna get you some victory points, intrigue cards, and then later, further down, some of these get them two victory points each. Also, as you progress up these charts, once you get to the second space, you'll gain victory points on this side. And when you get to the top level, you'll get this, which gets you a victory point. But if someone else passes you on that chart, they will take that from you. So you, you'll lose the one victory and they'll gain on the chart. And that is the basics of setup and parts of the round in Dune Imperium. As always, hope this video helped you in setup and how to play the basics of the game. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.